All right, so we found what K is, we found what period is. Now, what's important is when the period changes, our tick marks are going to change. So it's not always going to be pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. If the period changes and it's like the period is pi, that means your tick marks have to change. If it's greater than 2 pi, that means your tick marks have to match up with that. So again, just to make sure we have this and remember it, for sine and cosine, the period, the original period, is 2 pi. That's the original. Now, when the period changes, from 2 pi, so when it, in other words, when it changes, the tick marks are going to change. So if the period changes, the tick mark changes. So that's important to know. Whenever your uh, period changes, your tick marks change. So here's look at let's take a look back at our original um, tick marks. He's, these are our original tick marks. Starts off with zero. So zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi are all the, the, the original tick marks. That's what we start off with, that's what we've talked about. Now, to make, so we said that when our period changes, the tick marks change. So to change our tick marks, because the period would, would change, we're going to do this. So, in other words, we take every tick mark and we divide it by k. So, it's kind of like the same thing we did with our period. We divided 2 pi divided by k. So, when it comes to each one of our original tick marks, we divide each one of those by k to figure out what the new tick mark is going to be to figure out, to pretty much match up with the period that we said we're going to have. So, we divide every tick mark by k. So that means you're going to have to remember these tick marks. That's why I said earlier that you have to know those. You can't just be like, well, that's on the, the, the graph, so I can just copy what's on the graph. You have to know them because you're going to now divide them by K. So it's important that you know those. So we're going to go to example four. We're going to actually deal with changing these tick marks over so that we can match with our new period. So let's go to example four here. And the whole directions will be to find the new tick marks. That's it. Find the new tick marks. And we're going to use the function y equals sine 5x. And again, this is find the new tick marks. All right, so first thing that's always important is you always start off by finding what K is. 
So here, what is K? It's 5. It's the number in front of X or in front of theta. So K is 5. And then what is your period? And again, we do 2 pi divided by K for period. We already know K is 5. So that means that is going to be 2 pi divided by 5. Yeah, we already did that one before, didn't we? Yeah, this looks familiar like we did on the last part. Okay, so we have the K, we have the period. Now we also have to find our new tick marks. So I'm going to kind of like draw a line here. And for each one of these tick marks, we have 0, we have, again, pi over 2, we have pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. We have to divide each one of those by what we said our k is. So we said our k was 5, so we divide each one of these by 5. And if you want to write this vertical, you can write it vertical too. You don't have to do it horizontal like I did. I'm going to go ahead and put the commas here. Now with it, if you look at it and see it, this part right here is already a fraction and there's nothing, no work to have to be done. It's not a fraction divided by a number or anything of that sort. So I'm going to leave this alone and I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to leave both of those alone because those are already simplified down as far as possible. You can't do anything else with those. But the other ones here, we have a fraction divided by a whole number and a fraction divided by a whole number. And then we have zero divided by a, a number. And we know zero divided by anything is just zero. So we're done with that one. Again here, we're done with pi over five. We're going to work on that. And then again here, we're done with pi. 2 pi over 5. Now, this does not happen every single time. This only happens when there's not a fraction or something to divide and simplify down. So in this case, these here are simplified as far as possible. That doesn't happen every time. So don't say like, well, Mr. Hall said it happens every time. So this is what you do on the practice the example. So it's just, it's what we do every time. I'm telling you now that is not true. It's not going to happen every time. But you only have to do work for the parts that you have to do work for. All right, so here, we're going to do keep, change, flip. So we're going to keep our pi over 2. We're going to change the division to multiplication. And we're going to flip 5. So 5 is originally 5 over 1. If we flip that, that's 1 over 5. Same thing is going to happen here. We keep the 3 pi over 2. We change division to multiplication. And we get 1 over 5. Now some of you guys are like, well, can I just put in the calculator and get a decimal answer and be done with it? And the answer is no. Because none of your answers are going to be um, uh, decimals. And we need to make sure we have our radicals, uh, our um, pi's in your answer. You, got, you have to have pi in your answer. You can't just have a decimal answer and be done with it. You have to have pi. All right, so here, if we multiply straight across, we get pi over 10. And again, here, if we multiply straight across, that gives us 3 pi over 10. And the rest of them, we can just go and bring straight down. So we keep 0 there, keep pi over 5 there, and we keep... 2 pi over 5. Okay, so it works the same process over and over again. The only thing that might be different is if there's a fraction down here at the bottom, you just flip that fraction and make it, so if it's like, for example, that says it was 2 thirds here, that'd be 3 over 2. We just flip it. Same thing happens. So keep change flip. It's going to work no matter whether you have a fraction on the bottom or not. So at this point, that's all you have to do when it comes to finding your new tick marks. And at this point, I'm not going to give you a practice. I'm going to go ahead and move straight into the next example because I want to go ahead and use all the stuff together now. Finding the period, finding the, um, 
the um, K, finding new tick marks, and also graphing. So we're going to put all that together in this next 